Hello, everybody. I, I know it's a bit late, considering that full volume has already started, but I thought I'd take the time to film a robot explanation video. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to be as long as the other ones, because the robot's relatively simple, but yeah, let's get started. So here's the front of our robot. Uh, we can see we have our tire flywheel here. And that chains up to our purple mechanism, which is like the, the little spinning wheel. Down here, this is our wedge for the purple wheel. So the purple wheel would slot right into this. And it was super useful for driving, like driving on the far side and for autonomous. Then if I turn to the side here, not much going on. We just have four X plates, a custom license plate here, and then our end game tucked away in here. You can see our end game tucked away. Then if I zoom in here, you can see we have sprocket here, which goes up to this sprocket, which powers our entire conveyor. And I'll get to the conveyor later. If I turn to the back side here, we can see this is the back side of our robot. And let me show you the yellow. So I'll put that down now. So now I put our yellow mechanism down. It's super simple, but also kind of weird. So the way it works is when we want to get yellow, we're going to raise our four bar lift for our blue. And that drops down these little sort of like arms that have these rolling blue things on the end. And those things help align the top of the yellow and it makes getting yellow a lot better. So then down here, we have our ratchet system. This is how we sort of make the yellow stay up once we get it. So here we have our yellow. We just enter the dispenser. This thing flips up by hitting the gray bar. So just pushes it up like a little pivot. Then they go into the robot. We have this bar here with a plastic sheet on it just to help prevent them from going into the conveyor via that hole. Now that's a big problem. So when we go into the yellow dispenser, this slider uh, gets pushed in and then en engages with the blue gear, which then spins this ratchet and then that engages with the pawl here. So if I lift up the pawl, I could bring it back out, but then I can spin it back in. You can see the ratchet clicking. And once that happens, it tensions this band here. So it makes it more tensioned, which prevents this thing from, you know, coming back up. It's impossible for it to come back up. Over time, we did have to change the band out as it lost tension, but it's held up pretty well. In here, we can see our gyro sensor as well as our end game motor and also a mess of cables that we never never bothered fixing. So I'll turn to the side once again. We have our second license plate and then more X plates. We have our skirts here to prevent us from you know, running on the discs and up here. We have our four bar lift. So just a super simple one to five gear ratio, one to five motor right here. Then we have a long axle running all the way across to this one by right here. And it's connected to the shaft via this little um, blue thing, like one by four lock plate thingy. Super unique piece, but also very helpful. We had to do some very, very weird um, building tactics in this area because of our design choice with the X-plates. Which meant that we had to sort of build off um, this sort of central area in order to get the pieces, the middle hole for these bars to come across. So then we have our four bar lift. It's kind of crooked as you can see, mainly because we use a gear here and then this piece right here, it's a bit of a difference, but it doesn't really matter. On the sides of the four bar, we have these um, three long standoffs, which connect to the one by. And when the arm gets lowered, you can see the one by pushes up on these arms. So they move out the way and allow us to sort of go into the middle to shoot. And then it's just a typical four bar with a little hook there. You pull down, the blue falls into the robot. And then we have these plates here to block this entrance when we're getting purple because it just flings all the way back here. So now I'll show you guys the conveyor in action. Before I do that, I would like to go over some features of the conveyor. So we use five treads, one, two, three, four, five. And on the treads, we have these blue RAM pieces. And these RAM pieces have two functions. It allows us to go backwards 
So the ramp pieces basically just go right under the discs. And then if I move this thing forwards, you can see back there, we have these little uh, gray flaps. Focus, please. We have these little gray flaps to prevent the disc from going in between the treads. Although that still became sort of a problem elsewhere. And I'll talk about that right now. So during one of our matches at Worlds, actually a disc somehow got in between the treads like that. And we did clear out the jam and shot everything, but we ha had no time to spare. And we thought we fixed that with the standoff running across. You can see it right under there, but I guess not. I think that was one of the main problems with the conveyor. Another main problem with the conveyor was this area right here. You can see we have a plastic sheet under there to smooth out the transition. Then we had to mess around with this thing a whole bunch and basically find a way to help yellow go into the robot, but not block this area and cause a bunch of jams. I think we did a pretty, pretty good job. We have this blue ramp piece right here because there's an axle poking out. If you zoom in, you can see the axle poking out there. And basically that's an axle from the end game that I didn't want to, you know, mess with and we just left it there. So now I'll just turn on the conveyor and you can see the ramps in action. Super simple. Yeah, it, it works pretty well. It's pretty fast. I think we're running at like 30 something percent velocity. We found that the faster it runs, you know, of course, the more discs that are going into the flywheel at once, we just have to find the balance there. It was, it was pretty difficult. It took a lot of trial and error. We were still tweaking it in like the days before world, still messing with that a bunch, especially this area, but we got it to work. So that's pretty cool. This is our standoff placement. It's pretty weird. So I'll tilt the robot up so you can see it better. But basically we have this two by which is attached to the drive base. Drive base is a two to one speed ratio. Uh, it's the wrong side. Works super well. We have these standoffs right here to do the same thing as the skirts, prevent discs from clogging up the wheels. Works pretty well. I might mention the bumpers here. These are for the bar. Uh, just, you know, we don't go over the bar with the, the purple. Anyways, we have our standoff placement. It's a two by attached to this beam. I don't know why we kept it as a two by. It could be a one by, we just never changed it. Then we have these standoffs, just one hole apart until the end. Then it's no holes apart. Uh, they're pretty close to the flywheel, I would say, in terms of like distance. It's, it's pretty hard to get your finger in there. And then we have these uh, pins that are left over from this building, messing around with it. We never bothered to take them off. And then when we tested it, our flywheel worked super well, and we thought it's like good luck. So our ramp itself is a one by ramp to reduce the friction, but at the end we have these plates. This is sort of what we did with our seesaw on our previous robot. And the reason we sort of kept it like this is because it works super well with the seesaw. The transition was super smooth, and we just thought it would work super well here, and it did. So for our flywheel speed adjustment, we didn't really think it out too much. We have two speeds, three if you include the purple. So the purple speed is 100%. Then we have our main shooting velocity, which is what we start at. Then we have what we call packing velocity, which is basically like it adds about 10 to the regular velocity just to help pack the discs more efficiently. And I can show you that right now. So we have the controller here. I push the button once, it will basically, well, first it's gonna lower the arm for purple. So it's gonna lower the arm to block that gap because what our strategy is we get yellow, then we go to purple. So we need to spin the flywheel. Um, we need to also lower this thing to cover the gap. So I'll do that right now. As you can see, the light turns to purple to indicate the mode. Then I, if I push it again, it lowers the flywheel to the shooting speed, the base velocity, 
and it raises the arm up for blue. So that we can put the arm down, and then we're shooting, we're shooting, and then if I want to do packing, I just push this top button here. You can see the light turn red, and then you could also maybe audibly hear the flywheel increase in velocity. I can push it again, it returns back to normal. I can push this button again, it goes there. Yeah, the fly was pretty loud because uh, the robot's kind of like beat up. And we also have no off button for the flywheel. So to turn our flywheel off, we have to close the program and kill it. So I think our end game is pretty cool because we wanted the end game to basically be like tucked in between the X plates of our robot, sort of make like a, like a box robot. And the way we did it, we swapped out our old end game, which is like the band powered one that we took from some Chinese team and put our own twist on it. And then we just swapped it out for a regular, you know, scissor lift because the old one was way too wide and wouldn't fit in there. And the way we power this thing, we have the motor all the way back here because there's nowhere else to put it. We have a chain that runs all the way up. You can see to a sprocket there. That sprocket, it's kind of hard to see, but it's on the same axle as a blue gear there. That gear runs up to this gear in a torque ratio. It's also worth noting the chain itself is a torque ratio. So I'm pretty sure the whole thing is five to one. Then we have our arm, it just extends out. You can see it extends out very far. Uh, one interesting feature about the arm, once we extend it, we can't pull it back even though it's a scissor lift because you kind of poorly, poorly designed this area. But like there's this weird thing, it just like hops across the ground, so it, you know, never failed. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything in the robot. There's not much else to say. It's a really simple robot. I mean, there's really not much else to say about the robot. It did super well at Worlds. Um, the finals, you know, some mistakes happened. Um, it wasn't really our fault, but we did make some mistakes on our part. And I think it all just kind of added up. And the field there was not what we typically anticipated. So that sucked for us. Uh, but yeah, we did super well. I mean, tied for fourth in the world for skills is it's crazy. And second in our division and ranking, so yeah, we did pretty well. Uh, plans for the future: we're going to VRC, so we're gonna have a VRC team. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna do. I mean, we have the field set up in the garage right now, so yeah, still building it. But yeah, uh, we're also gonna have an IQ team. Don't know if they're gonna have the same name. It's gonna have different team members except one person. Don't know how that's going to perform, but I mean, we're going to VRC, so yeah, see you guys in VRC. Good luck in full volume and over under, and thank you guys so much for watching the channel. Things are going to change. <laughs> I'm going to be posting IQ and VRC and other stuff. I plan to do like some tutorials and other stuff, maybe, I don't know, but there's going to be noticeable changes. Upload schedule during the summer might be a bit wacky, but yeah, I mean, see you guys.